Thou shalt not drop an atom bomb or shit one hour in the first place. Yes, I'm talking to you, Dr. Robert Oppenheimer, known as Opie to his friends. And if you've got an atom bomb for a friend, your only enemy is a judge. When Opie heard the good news about Hiroshima, he said, thank God it wasn't a dud. What God are you thanking for Hiroshima, Oppenheimer? And Truman said, God has given us the other bomb and he will show us how to use it. Oh my God. Hey. I recollect some years ago in Newcastle on Tyne, I was on a panel, well, it was about 10 years ago, with a Dr. Pike, called himself the scientist, and he was defending and extolling the expansion of nuclear installations. Responsible politicians know what they are doing. Nuclear power plants have a splendid safety record, I thought, right then. Sooner or later, for you by. And I said to him, Dr. Pike is a scientist yourself. You are doubtless acquainted with a fruit fly experiment. Uh, and which generations of fruit flies exposed to radiation have clearly demonstrated that there are no favorable mutations resulting from such fatally radiation levels as would be massively released in a major nuclear accident or a nuclear exchange? The fruit flies all mutated to be sure, wouldn't you? And all the mutations observed were unfavorable, grossly unfavorable. Just let me ask you one question, doctor. Do you want to see your own daughter born with two cunts? Uh, you know how to answer me. One German writer, Gottfried Penn, he phrased uh, a saying that the word is the prick of the mind. That's what he, how he put it. Uh, I'd like to get into the, what is the nature of word? Um, have you, you once talked about a field theory of, uh, of a word. Uh, what were your findings there? I really didn't arrive at any valid conclusions at all except that the word seems to be uh, an organism. And um, also my uh, guess that the, uh, that the written word came before the spoken word. Yeah. Is it an, a dangerous organism or just an organism? Well, uh, I, it depends. It, it, um, it can become dangerous. It acts like a, a, a virus that is in, the, in that it replicates itself. Of course, um, you would, a, a virus would not be recognized as a virus, can only be recognized as a virus by its symptoms. And a virus that produced no, um, should we say, um, a psychopath pathological symptoms would not be recognized as a virus. The, the, the symptoms of, a, of, of the virus, where could you detect them when you, in, in words or language? Well, you could, uh, one thing you could detect them in is in that it is compulsive and involuntary. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult for anyone to, uh, to stop their flow of words. Most people don't try, but if you try, you find it is extremely difficult. So here's something that's happening against your will, actually. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's something that yes. indicates an influence from the outside. What about the, uh, the language of the mass, mass media or the political language, the demagogic uh, language? Is that influenced by it too, or is that just well, a byproduct? Uh, of course, the uh, political language is always uh, concerned with generalities. Uh, they, don't, they don't want to be precise. It's deliberately, uh, deliberately being used to confuse rather than to elucidate the difference between it. 
a, a writer is trying to uh, evoke clear images through language, rather an awkward instrument, but a uh, politician is trying to do just the opposite. He's trying to cloud issues rather than clear them. Um, now, the writer is mainly, of course, uh, concerned or working with the word, but uh, we have a, a multimedia effect uh, right now going on. Uh, I mean, we I say, keep saying we. Uh, we. You can notice it everywhere, like um, music is very important, uh, uh, pictures are very important. Oh, yes, yes, you, you have the... Um film medium in which you have you have words and music and images uh, uh, certainly could it be helpful for a writer to go out into other medias like film well like you have been you've been on on records with yes. uh, Laurie Anderson and you have been in films is that uh, well as soon as you go into films then you're in a, yet another medium and you you do what you can, you do well or you don't do well. Uh, simply as a different, uh, different media. He has gone away through invisible morning, leaving a million tape recordings of his voice behind, fading into the cold spring air, pose a colorless question. Question. lines between uh, disciplines are breaking down everywhere. The lines between music and, and um, word, between painting and words and so on, and photography. There's a general tendency for the, uh, the media, the uh, disciplines to be breaking down, the lines to be breaking down. Thanksgiving Day, November 28th, 1986. Thanks for the wild turkey and passenger pigeons destined to be shit out through wholesome American guts. Thanks for a continent to despoil and poison. Thanks for Indians to provide a modicum of challenge. Thanks for vast herds of bison to kill and skin, leaving the carcasses to rot. Thanks for bounties on wolves and coyotes. Thanks for the American dream to vulgarize and falsify until the bear lies shine. mankind moving into space? Well, I think it's the only way that he, uh, the only um, possible solution. I don't say that they will, but um, it's the only way, I think, for them to go. There's no place to go except up and out. To move, yeah. to move into space, uh, is, is there any mutation necessary for man, or do you think we're equipped to go? Just I don't to... think we're equipped at all. That's the point that would require a biologic mutation quite as drastic as was involved in the uh, shift from water to land. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, the possibility, the air breathing potential must be there before uh, the transition can be made, otherwise it's simply suicidal. And psychologically? Well, uh, any, um, any physiological mutation is going to involve psychological profound uh, psychological changes necessarily. And do you see that taking place here already? Uh, or is it very far away? Well, no, I don't think it's very far away at all. We know that if people, um, if the astronauts 
uh, should stay in space, say, for five years, they'd lose almost all their bones. <clears throat> if you don't use it, you lose it. Mm -hmm. And uh, skeletal structure has no, uh, no use in a weightless environment. So the end result would be something rather like a jellyfish, I imagine. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks a lot. Well, my pleasure.